Well, it's happened, the inevitable that will happen to anyone who does resin printing. I've had a failure of the FEP and I've got some resin that's cured onto the screen. If you haven't had this happen to you, you will. And no, I didn't have a screen protector on. Yes, I know, my bad. But let me show you that my mistake can be your saviour and I'll show you how to get this resin off. First thing you're going to do is soak it with a little bit of IPA. Get it really, really wet with IPA. You can soak a rag or a cloth in IPA and leave it lying on the top, which will help just to soften it. Now, this is water washable resin, but you'd still find IPA will do the job wonderfully. So let it soak, get it nice and wet, and then take something that's plastic, not metal, nothing hard, just plastic. Now, I'm using a credit card here but you can actually buy plastic razors and it is a case of persevering. Use that piece of plastic to scrape and push and poke and try to get that resin off. It won't damage your screen, but it will start to get the resin off. And what you do is occasionally, you'll stop scraping, you'll get your uh, IPA and you'll rub it all down and you'll clean it all up and then you'll start again and slowly, slowly we'll catch monkey with this, you'll get it off. Um, so don't worry, don't fret, a little bit of work and a little bit of um, just taking your time and going for it, we'll get it off. Uh, of course, if you had a screen protector on, that would have been the best answer. So definitely invest in a screensaver. But if you get resin on, it's not the end of the world and you don't need to throw the printer in the bin. You don't need to replace the screen. You can get it off with a little bit of hard work and perseverance. Now, of course, I know I've got a hole in my FEP, but what if you're not sure? Well, here's a little trick and I'll show you how to check. So take your nice, clean vat, make sure you clean it out, place it on some kitchen roll and fill it up with a little bit of water. And uh, the water will, if you've got a hole in your FEP, seep through and you'll see it on the kitchen roll. Now, you might not see it straight away. You might have to leave it for a while and you might have to just give it a little bit of an agitation and a push, but that will do the trick eventually and you will see like I can see here that some of the water has gone through so I have got a hole in the FEP no surprises there but if ever you're unsure that is how you check so this now means we need to change that FEP screen and out of the whole printing hobby this is the bit of the hobby I absolutely detest so place your build your, your build plate face down so you can see the first line of screws and take the allen keys that come with your machine and undo them. Um, you'll probably find that some of them are quite hard to undo and they're a little bit stiff. Just make sure you put the allen key in properly because you don't want to be turning the heads and, and knackering these screws. And once you've got all of those screws off, the first layer anyway, take out your FEP with the metal barrier that surrounds it Flip it over and you'll see the next set of screws. Oh, here we go again, that need to be undone. Now they are a different size on the Saturn anyway, and on most printers it is the same. So take your Allen key and work your way around and undo all of these screws. Now make sure that you put them somewhere safe. You don't want to be using them. And again, be really careful. You don't want to be turning the heads because you're going to have a nightmare of getting them out if you knacker up the heads on them. And take those all out until they're all done. And then once you've done that you can separate the two metal shells, take out your damaged FEP paper and pop that quickly in the bin away. Now I'm going to put a link in the description for where I got these FEPs from but make sure you get the right size for your printer. If you're using like I am a Saturn or a Mono X it shows you the size on there um, but just check with it wherever you buy them from that you're getting the right ones as I say I'll put it in the description now when you open this up you will see this is a protective layer on the front and back it's a bit like a, a screensaver for a tele for a mobile take both of those off until you're just left with the thick FEP screen and lay that across the first piece of the metal uh, barrier around the, the and you make sure that there's there's FEP around the edges on both sides of it so centralize it as best you can take the second part of your bracket and place it on the top and now you need to reverse the process with all those screws that you took out you need to put back in now you've got to remember that you're going to have to pierce the FET potentially so put them in give it a 
Make sure that the screw is square. Give it a little bit of tension with your Allen key and give it a twist and put it in. Now, I suggest you do this corner to corner and then work your way around. Um, now, some people use um, bits of rolled up kitchen roll or something underneath to work on the, the actual, uh, how it's like a drum really, how firm it is. I don't bother with any of that. I just literally put it all together, screw it all in, and I've not really had any problems. I'm sure there are some people out there that would argue with me. But when you've got them all in and they're all tight and they're all done, take a sharp knife or a sharp pair of scissors and cut the excess of that FEP from around the outside off. Get it as close as you can to the metal and work your way around until all that excess FEP has been removed. Just be careful. Uh, what you want to make sure you're not doing at any stage of this with your Allen key or with your scissors or your knife is piercing the FEP. Otherwise, it's a complete fruitless process and you're going to have to start again. So just make sure you take your time and protect that FEP. Okay, all those manky bits now that you've just cut off, move it all out of the way. Make sure there's nothing under your FEP that will damage it. There we go. And take your main build tray, just turn it back over Remember, we turned it over in the first place, we're turning it back now, and now we're going to use those larger screws to put it back in. Now, just remember again, you're going to have to pierce the FEP with the screws, so give them a really good push when you push them in, and they should go straight through the FEP okay, and then push quite firmly with your Allen key and tighten it up. And again, I suggest you do corner to corner here and make it uh, and, and make it as tight as you can at this point, but just get them in and get the uh, get them gripped and get the turning started. You can go back and tighten them after. So pop them all in. Now again, it is a bit of a nightmare, this process. As I say, it's my least favorite part of the hobby. It's just very, very time consuming. I tend to put an audible book on or some music in the background and just, just get on with it that way. But uh, as I say, not a very nice part of the job, but a necessity. Now make sure that once you've got them all in and they've all got a grip that you take the Allen key, turn it around the other side and tighten them all up. It's really really important that they're all tight and you don't want them sticking out or sticking above the surface and so make sure that you don't miss any in this process. And what we're doing now is we're actually tightening the FEP like tightening the skin of a drum. And as I say, some people actually measure the resonance sounds on it. I don't bother with any of that. I've had no real problems just doing it the way that I'm doing it. And once it's all tightened up, you are done and you are dusted and your new FEP is in situ. So thumbs up to that. Move across to your printer and... Uh, just pop it back on. Just make sure there's nothing under your FEP from all the work you've done before. Place it back onto your printer and take your securing bolts. Now remember, you're going to have to pierce the FEP with these as well. So give them a little bit of a push and push it down. And it's all done and ready to go. Well, I hope you found this useful and I hope you've realised that your credit card is not just there to buy a new printer, but to help you clean the resin off your FEP. If you like what you've seen today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you need to buy anything, have a look in the item description and you can get it from there. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.